Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I need to talk about, um, Leviticus, uh, chapter 25, uh, um, Leviticus chapter 25, uh, basically institutes the concept of the Jubilee year. Um, there is this idea where, on the Sabbath year, um, you know, seven, 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 seven years, the, um, the land is going to fell out of, and, um, the, uh, the Hebrews are meant to enjoy the bounty of the last, in the past few years. Um, but after seven, seven Sabbath years, it's supposed to be, the, um, seven Sabbath years are supposed to be the, uh, the year of Jubilee, uh, uh, now the um, we're supposed to the Israelites were supposed to blow. Yeah, they were to blow the trumpet uh, on the we uh, get throughout the whole um, land and to declare a jubilee on the. Uh, yeah, you will. You will. Um, Sanctify the fiftieth year, and declare liberty throughout the land, and um, yes, the um, and each man, for example, will return his patrimony, uh, and you will, you will rest, or well, as written with the pointings, the vowel markings, tishobu, which, uh, you know the. Uh, it's the Masoretic pointings. Um, they were added around the eighth, ninth, eighth, ninth century AD by the Masoretes. Now, it ought to be mentioned that in a defective text, which is written without vowels, to add vowels to such a text is inherently an editorial act, and this is certainly a good example, um, because the the chapter twenty-five. Of Leviticus talks about early on in the chapter it talks about mm, the jubilee the sabbath years and then the jubilee year and and the uh the imperative to let the land lie fallow on those years and um yeah uh which is called um which is i mean the, this you know which i mean but uh, I mean, in later, um, in later, uh, in the later part of the chapter, it talks about how the land may not be alienated from its um, original owners. That it, the, the, tribe of, the tribes of Israel were all allotted, allotted a piece of the land, a piece of, a piece of Israel, and each family and sub tribe had um had their own um had their own allotted property which could not be alienated permanently so every if they sold anything or leased any property they had to be returned to them every 50 years now um so this uh tetragrammaton um there yeah, there's a uh, it's sort of plausible this could mean return. It well, looks like it means rest, but there's no wav here. Now, the wav that's missing has been put there using the vowel pointings, these three dots. Um, yeah, and then we go to um, the verb, see, there's this, the verb yashab. Um, sit, remain, or dwell. Um, uh, which I mean is the famous by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down from Psalm 137. Like, Shem Yishab no. Uh, uh, um, <coughs> and there's this other 
hypothetical alternative should turn back or return. Now, there's all kinds of different schools of pronunciation of Hebrew where the um, the W is pronounced as a V a lot. So, and um, B is off paradoxically pronounced as V as well a lot. So Abram can be Avram. But um, let's if we stick, sticking to the uh, the text as written, we um yeah we get this uh well um we w we end up having to dis discussing the um Hebrew grammar uh, the uh, the pay yod verbs um. Yeah, well, these um, in the old-fashioned Hebrew grammar, grammar, these one yod verbs were called the pay yod, and the one wav verbs, that is the first letter being the wav, they were called the pay wav verbs, and they're they're of interest because their 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 conjugations are irregular. Um. Um, but it's important to note here on this page well read verbs that begin with yod are of two types those that were originally pay wav and those that were originally pay yod the two types are the two types are indistinguishable in the perfect possible and the infinitive absolute because they both begin with yod in these forms um, in this lesson we examine the first the verbs that originally began with wav and then with the verbs that originally began with yod. Uh, now, the greater number of verbs that begin with yod were originally pay wav verbs. In several Hebrew stems, that wav is not present either as a consonant or vowel letter. Uh, in the cal, for the most part, it is not retained. And going to the imperfect, which is what we're concerned about in the cal fixed conjugation, the imperfect, the original root letter of pay wav verbs is absent. The original root letter of the pay wav verbs is absent. Both the prefix vowel and the same vowel are normally called sere. Okay, what's that saying? That the verb yashab, to sit, is conjugated like a pay wav verb and um so adding a um adding a um where you add the t the test to the um to to get this the second person masculine plural form you add the uh, the t like equivalent equivalent of a T, um, and because the uh, as, it, as it says the uh, like a a paywa vowel uh, where the uh, the first letter is is quiet, and we have tishbu well literally, but it is to be observed that this um, this tetragram out in here is. Apart from the pointings, which are not original anyway, this is indistinguishable from the form found in the um, the, Masoretic, the, um, the Leviticus 25:10. So, uh, trying to um, trying to insert artificially insert with some difficulty trying to say that this means to return should and not having a wav um, in the text uh, that seems unnecessarily com unnecessary complication to say the least especially when such a simple and obvious and um, immediately immediately uh, uh, plausible translation is available uh, 